Hey guys, my latest order from Bowser Electronics just showed up and in this box should be all the parts I need to restore this Admiral set, this Admiral set, that Admiral set, and my Philco 643 radio. Now I get a lot of questions about how do you know what parts to buy and what kind of parts do I like to use and so on, so I thought I'd go through a quick rundown. So here are all the parts that were in that box. The ones in these metalized Mylar pouches are the modern semiconductor devices I'll be using to build a battery eliminator for the Philco 643. So we've got some Zener diodes, some bridge rectifiers, some LM317 regulators. Those are all pretty self-explanatory, I think. For resistors, I like to use metal oxide for the power resistors, that'd be the one, two, three, five watt resistors, and metal film for the half watt resistors. I especially like to buy ones that have stripes on them. You can also find ones like this guy, which are printed. Not crazy about these because once you mount them in it can be hard to tell what the value is, depending on how it's oriented. And they don't look anything like the originals. It's hard to find carbon composition resistors in the higher wattages. So if you really want to preserve the original look, uh, good luck. I've seen a few specialty tube amp part suppliers that sell 2 and 5 watt carbon comps. But you're paying several dollars per resistor so it really gets expensive fast. I think these are close enough. It's still the same color code and so on. For the film capacitors, I took some out of the packages here. Generally I like to use these. They call them axial leads. That's what all the original ones were like, these. They don't look quite the same, but the physical dimensions are fairly similar. So when you want to run the leads, they're oriented the same way. The other style are the radial leads, where both leads come out of one end problem with using these is you have to bend the leads at a right angle and then hope that they, re they span the same space that the original did. Often they don't, especially in TVs, and you have to splice a little bit of wire onto the end or leave part of the original lead still in the circuit and twist them together. The reason I do buy these is that these do work out quite nicely when you restuff these Bakelite blocks because they fit in there. Once you hollow them out, get the old tar out, they fit in there quite nicely, and then the leads come up right through these holes. They also cost less. So, for example, I use a lot of 0.047 uh, 630 volt caps, and these were about a quarter the price of the axial leads, so I bought a big pack of them. And I was pleasantly surprised that the leads on these are quite long. So when I bend these, they won't be quite as long as these guys, but eh, yeah, they should be fairly usable. The old capacitors are often rated at 200, 250, 400, and 600. The new ones, uh, you can still get them at 250 and 400, and then 630 volts. The price difference usually isn't too much, so if you just buy 630s across the board, you'll be fine. You can always use a higher voltage to replace one with a lower voltage. Now, as for the electrolytics, I like to use Nichicon. Uh, there are other brands that are just fine. Illinois Capacitor, Mallory, the Sprague Atomics if you can find them. They're pretty pricey, but they're generally regarded as being the best you can buy. I like the Nichicons, not only because they have a decent reputation, but you can get them in high voltage ratings, so these are all rated for 105 degrees Celsius. But they're also uh, high capacity, um, small dimension. So for example, these are both 47 microfarad 450 volt caps. But look how much smaller this guy is. Nichicon's been coming out with more and more lines of these really small high density caps lately. And Mauser carries all of them, it seems like. So this is the PZ series. So when it comes to restuffing electrolytic cans, like this guy, 
it's a lot nicer to use these small ones because there are three capacitors that need to replace this. And if I was going to use these, three of these aren't going to fit in this can. But three of these will, no problem. And the cost difference really isn't that much. So definitely worth seeking out. Mauser also recently started carrying Panasonic and they, uh, they make pretty good quality parts too. Occasionally, uh, in TVs especially, you do find some capacitors that are axiolites, so I did get some of these as well. You know, not, not all the electrolytics are actually inside those big metal twist lock cans. Sometimes there are some under the chassis, so that's what these are for. And uh, that's about it. Um, as far as the half watt resistors go, I bought a big assortment on uh, eBay a while ago, about thousands of them. So I'm pretty well covered on those. So generally when I place orders, I only need to order the one, two, and five and higher wattage resistors. Likewise, I try to keep some capacitors on hand. Generally what I do whenever I order any parts, if they're reasonably inexpensive, I always order more than I actually need. Not only because it might screw up, <laughs> or while I'm troubleshooting the set, they might burn out, but uh, the excess ones I can always use in the next project. Oh, and finally, I ordered some new soldering iron tips. I had been using conical tip bits on my soldering iron, but those really don't work so good on the larger type of connections you find on uh, vintage sets. Uh, these are spade bits, kind of like a flat bladed screwdriver. I heard these work a lot better. We'll see. First up, I am going to do the Filco 643, because I don't think it will take that long. I think I have seven Bakelite blocks to rebuild, and four paper caps to restuff, and one electrolytic to rebuild. So, assuming none of the coils are open, um, shouldn't be too long before I can get this playing. After that, I will do this Admiral TV. Uh, basically because it's on top of the pile and it's the smallest of the three. <laughs> but before I do either of those, I have a few loose ends to tie up with other outstanding projects. I'll be talking more about those in upcoming videos. That's all for now.